Hello and listen family, how are you? Hope you're well. Welcome back to Elise the Great and hope you're keeping safe. Hope you're self quarantined and you're maintaining social distance and you're reading as much as you possibly can on COVID-19. And most important, hope you remember that you're beautiful within and without because that's the attitude we should be having during this pandemic and it's one of the things that's going to boost our immunity positive attitude so what are we talking about today today we are talking about extraordinary actions that lead to extraordinary results so in kenya the curfew has been a, a game of cat and mouse <laughs> between the police and the civilians in as much as some people may have so many opinions about it some are saying it's too brutal some are saying they're too harsh the police are beating up people we also need to understand that Kenyans are not the easiest kind of people in the department of taking instructions. Kenyans believe that they are right and they do not like taking instructions or like being corrected or like being told. And maybe that's one of the things that is causing the police to be a little bit harsh on us. If the president has stated the coffee begins at 7 p.m., clearly, why would you want to be outside at 8 in the evening, actually, even past 7? try and be home by six of course there are those few circumstances where you find yourself outside but you can always try but Kenyans you know had headed the first few days were just thinking it's a blast so the police had to do what they have to do because they're in the line of duty the soldiers who are working extra extra this time of this COVID-19 are the police and the doctors what the police and the doctors need not only in Kenya but all over the world is rest but they cannot rest right now because the pandemic is not slowing down so they need to be at their best, they're giving their best and we as civilians, we know that we need the doctors and we know that we need the police it would be nice actually for the right people be home on time stay home, stay safe, self-quarantine and if you find yourself with the symptoms of COVID-19 visit um, the nearest hospital and just try and help them have a little bit of an easy time we need them and they are giving, they know that their responsibility is to us and they are giving their best but we can also help them get a little bit of rest by cooperating in the whole process. So today as we talk about extraordinary results that come about from extra, extraordinary actions, I want us to talk about Korea. So apparently um, there is this channel on YouTube, it's called the Asian, Asian Boss. So this guy went to one of the lead doctors in the infection, infectious disease department and he was talking to him about COVID-19. You know, why I'm thinking about Korea is because funny enough in the whole world, it is a country that has actually managed COVID-19 well and who, which has managed to curb the spread of COVID-19, it's Korea. So apparently we all know that COVID-19 began sometime in December and by December 31st that's when uh, that's when the government of China uh, told who about the virus and now it's been spreading from that time from that from December till now it's like um, now this is the fourth month so the whole world is in a state where we have a disease that has never been before we do not have a vaccine neither do we have a treatment and we hardly even understand the disease itself so what am i talking about today i'm talking about korea and i'm discussing the interview that was held by asian boss with by the lead doctor in the infectious disease department and what he advised us as the rest of the world is in other countries what we can borrow from korea which is extraordinary what they are doing to help curb COVID-19. So this doctor actually has been in the infectious disease for 30 years and he's dealt with diseases like tuberculosis, AIDS, measles, SARS in 2013, the 2009 swine flu, Ebola in 2014 and mass outbreak of 2015. So what he says about COVID-19 is that COVID-19, yes, based on the studies that have been carried out, moved from the bats, but there was an intermediate. The intermediate could have been a snake, perhaps it could have been, um, what do you call this, 
javelins, those things that they buy from the sea market, and then from the intermediate, then it moves to the human beings. So then they believe it didn't just move from the bat to the human beings for just basic consumption, but there was an intermediate, um, intermediate host of the virus. Then the virus moved from the intermediate to the human beings. So he goes on to say that uh, each country is facing the same virus but has different different techniques of approaching the virus and the factors that affect the different approaches that each country is using include culture the demo demographics of the country and the sophistication of the healthcare of each and every country it goes on to say that um okay based on the reports of the data i'm going to read here is based on 20 on 23rd of march 2020 Based on 23rd of March 2020, Korea had a count of um, eight, uh, around 9,000 uh, COVID-19 confirmed cases. And out of these, they have um, the patients, they also, out of these, 20% of the patients are co were, uh, what do you call this, asymptomatic. Asymptomatic um, patients are the patients who are who show no symptoms of a disease but actually carry the disease and can spread the disease so he was saying that uh, what has actually helped korea is the fact that um, they are very active in testing and between the time that covid 19 was confirmed to be a pandemic all over the world korea has already tested 330 um 330,000 patients for COVID-19 and out of the 330 patients it has confirmed that uh, only 9,000 have actually had the disease and from the 9,000 3,000 have already been cured and from that those from the 9,000 those who've lost their lives are less they are around a thousand oh, okay I don't know the exact number I'll put it somewhere here the, of those who've lost their lives but Korea is being very receptive to or has been very positive in the department of COVID-19 and the patients are receiving proper medical care because the patients are willing to be tested and they're getting tested on time and once they're tested on time they're getting the proper treatment so he tells us that uh, basically the symptoms we all know the symptoms by now the symptoms mainly for the covid 19 include fever coughing difficulty or shortness of breath he also includes that our especially for the people within the age groups of 50 to 80 there are extra symptoms that it could be like fatigue loss of appetite and mild body aches all uh, mild body aches all over the body so he says that um the main thing that is making the COVID-19 affect people who are 60 plus is because they have a deteriorating immunosensitive <laughs> system. They have this word, they call it immunosensitive. I, I can't read it. I'll just put it. <laughs> I'll put it there for those who can read it. The immune system of someone who's 60 plus is low as compared to that person who is between like the age of 0 to 20 years. Zero is like a baby, 20 years. It goes on to say that actually what is happening in Korea is when they have noticed with the COVID-19 cases is that the people between the age of 0 to 20, they get the COVID-19 in the form of just a mild cold, which within a week or two goes away. But between the age groups of 20 and 30, one person has actually died from COVID-19. Between the age groups of 30 and 40, another one person has died in that age group. But most deaths have been noticed to come from the ages, from the ages of 50 all the way to 80. So <clears throat> he says that uh, <clears throat> other groups that despite age being the main factor that's affecting the people, affecting COVID-19 patients, the other risk groups that could also suffer from COVID-19. These include people who have cardiovascular problems, people with chronic lung issues, people with diabetes, smokers, because we know that nicotine accumulates in the respiratory system. Also, users of immunosuppressives, immunosuppressives such as steroids and uh, anti-cancer disease, uh, anti-cancer anti drugs. So these people happen to be risk groups. The main risk group is the elderly people, but these are other risk groups who should be very careful with their practices because this could also make them susceptible to dying from COVID-19. So 
of the scary fact about COVID-19 based on this doctor is that COVID-19 can be reinfected. So what do I mean it can be reinfected? So everybody in the world is sitting scared, worried about they catching COVID-19. But he said that in Korea, in as much as they've managed to curb the issue of COVID-19, like they've controlled it, it's not spreading as fast. They also noticed that a patient could come to hospital with the symptoms of COVID-19. Then the test would be done and yes, the patient could be confirmed to actually be having positive of COVID-19. Get the treatment for the 14 days or whatever period of time. Recover fully, go home. But then in like five to seven days, come back to the hospital with reoccurrent or reactivated COVID-19 symptoms. So it doesn't mean that once you get the COVID-19 and your your immune system is boosted and then you're healed because you know COVID-19 does not have a treatment, neither does it have a vaccine. The only thing that seems to be fighting, that seems to be able to combat the COVID-19 is your immune system. That's why we are all talking about boosting your immune system by exercising, eating healthy, getting enough rest and incorporating things that you know are immune boosters like garlic like our ginger like vitamins like making sure you just have a balanced diet reducing the amount of foods that are from the fridge like cold stuff because you know the main thing with covid 19 the killing factor the factor that bringing about death and is the worst part of the covid 19 is the fact that it brings about severe pneumonia even in China, when COVID-19 began, there were cases of, they did not know it was actually a virus, but the cases of severe pneumonia that was leading to death is what brought about the doctors to investigate in China, and then they found out there's a coronavirus, which is the COVID-19, and that's when they also alerted the whole world that there's this virus going around. So... So that is the worst fact, but the fact that you can be reinfected, your COVID-19 can actually be cured, then you can find that it can reoccur. And now this is the fact that is most baffling to the doctors and the scientists, because right now the doctors who should be finding a vaccine or should be finding a treatment are the same doctors who are stuck in hospitals treating us because we are getting infected with the COVID-19. So they do not have enough time to be also in the labs working on a treatment or working on a vaccine. We know that a vaccine can take up to 10 to, it can take 10 to 15 years, but our treatments can take a shorter period. But right now they do not have either. So what they are doing actually, they are talking on reuse of particular drugs. That's why they are talking about stuff like um, Viagra that initially was made for, for some respiratory issues they're talking about chloroquine they're talking about some AIDS drugs they're just trying to repurpose a drug that can somehow help manage severe cases of COVID-19 or it can bring about can be some kind of um, treatment for COVID-19 before they get to understand the disease itself and create a suitable drug but for the vaccine if all goes well the do this particular doctor says it could take if all if the countries, all countries work together and if all things are stable, it could take a minimum of 18 months to at least get a, a vaccine. But um, at least reuse of, a, of particular drugs that are seemingly helping manage COVID-19, that could be possible by as early as maybe June, July. People were also arguing on the fact that uh, maybe weather, when it becomes summer, because in okay, most countries right now it's winter, like Korea it's winter now, and they're saying when it's summer, the virus could actually lower and maybe it could be the end of the virus. But the issue is when one place in the world is uh, summer, the other place is winter. So maybe it could, the virus would move to a particular, to another region, and then it could become a regional disease. So that is the other major thing that brings about COVID-19 being quite an issue because we really do not understand what this virus really, really wants from us. So he also talked about the three main ways in which COVID-19 seems to be spread from one individual to the other. First is from droplets, when someone <coughs> coughs, the droplets of that type person, if they could land on maybe your face or they could land on some object or something that uh, brings about infection. The other is a direct contact, like handshake with someone who's infected. 
normally naturally when you cough you tend to put your hand on your mouth <coughs> or you cough and their droplets are going to be stuck on your hand or something that's why they are saying when you cough try and cough on your elbow <coughs> cough on your elbow because hardly will you find yourself using your elbow further but if you cough and the droplets land on your hand then you go shake someone's hand that is direct kind of um, infection then the second that is um that is the second that is direct contact leading to infection then there is our surfaces that is the third form is indirect contact which is i have come <coughs> i have maybe wiped my nose with my hand maybe it wasn't such a thing i wiped my hand or maybe i used a handkerchief and the handkerchief was somehow wet and i got some droplets of my mucus or coughing on my hand then i touched a doorknob i touched a wall i touched my phone i touched something or even touch the surface and someone else comes and touches the surface because we all know that the COVID-19 virus can last for three to five days or even ten to nine days. So when someone touches the same surface, the same door, not the same wall, the same door, they could get infected. He also says in some special cases, which is leading to people being told to avoid mass organ mass settings, uh, hotels, churches, mosques such things is the special case of aerosol transmission that is the airborne transmission this is where less or where droplets uh, are less than five microns and then they turn to aerosols aerosols are light and they are and aren't um they aren't affected much by gravity aerosols can jump for for can jump more than two meters hence this is how they affect a distant person within a crowd so the risk factors for such aerosols include churches, buses, restaurants, such places. Airborne transmission, however, is less in open places. So you see places like our restaurants and you know, churches and some stations, they are somehow enclosed and this enclosement also is what um, when I'm talking to you, when I'm talking, I am speaking. There is some speech that some saliva that stings but but it's in such small quantities that gravity does not pull it down. So when it's not pulled down by gravity and there's air in motion, this kind of saliva can tend to move to different to different directions and it can move as far as two meters. So I am talking here, maybe I'm in church, I'm singing and praising God and all that. My shouting and my singing can is bringing about some saliva. The small saliva has also those from less than five microns it's not a droplet it's an iso it moves through air and can get to the next person regardless of the distance it could it could actually even be one meter two meters apart but because it's light and there is motion there is air the air moves so saliva to someone else and that way that saliva no matter how small it contains a virus and that is what is going to affect the next person <laughs> very complicated stuff i think but that's why we are avoiding this group setting. So it's important to note that airborne transmission is mainly affecting close places or places where um, they're enclosed in a way. So airborne transmission is something that we should not quite worry about when we think of open places such as paths and paths and basically open places because you know in open places the air is constantly in motion and then that is what actually helps to ensure that such places do not carry most of the virus because there's enough air that you know air is constantly putting things in motion so the virus is not left stagnating in the air as would be the case in close places they go the doctor goes on to say that 30% uh, of the patients that were found to have COVID-19 also showed an extra symptom that is they lost their sense of taste and smell so they could not taste and smell things for up between 5 to 10 days so he tells us okay there's this debate that's still going on and um, I'm not saying it's like in bad faith but we need to know that one of the main differences between if you think of Korea and Kenya is the fact that you know the culture, mainly the culture is very different. People, especially from those sides, that side of the world, having masks on is a very normal thing because they have faced a couple of 
uh, a couple of pandemics like the SARS, the MERS, the, the swine flu, they've faced these kind of diseases. And the doctors there recommend that despite self-quarantine, safe distancing, reporting cases of showing symptoms of the disease, they include on washing your hands, they also include wearing masks as part of the preventive measures to control and to help manage COVID-19. However, who has made it first has put it across the world that we do not need to wear masks unless we are infected. And this is agreeable to people in US, Africa and Europe. Those three continents agree with this fact, but places like China, like uh, Japan and like Korea, people wearing masks is a norm and everybody finds it normal. But I know and it's logical for who to say that we should not purchase masks and unless we show the symptoms of COVID-19 because people are hoarding masks in their houses till it, it has become an issue in the medical department where doctors are lacking the masks and they need the masks so that they can be able to treat the COVID-19 patients. So as a measure to ensure that the medical practitioners do not lack masks that's why who is suggesting that unless you show symptoms of having the COVID-19 do not wear masks to avoid people holding masks but the Koreans have said that one of the things that is helping most to curb the issue of COVID-19 is wearing masks the argument of this doctor and the argument of most people in that side of the world including China and Japan is the fact that a mask protects the nose and the mouth and people especially who wear glasses they're super protected because there are three main entry points for the COVID-19 that's your eyes your eyelids contain mu mucus they have a mucus membrane and so does your nose and so does your mouth like the upper side of your mouth they have mucus membranes these mucus membranes contain a receptor called ACE2 ACE2 is suitable for a, it's suitable for a bacteria to attach itself so they say that uh, to avoid um, having the bacteria attaching itself in either of these places wear a mask so at least you know your nose and your mouth are covered then avoid touching yourself on your face like on your eyes or touching your using your hands touch yourself on your face because your hands you never know where they're touched and also wash your hands as often as possible because when you wash your hands as often as possible yeah, they are clean we also say that um the skin you don't really have to worry much about the skin because um the rest of the skin because the skin does not have these receptors and the skin acts as a barrier it's not the skin that can actually transmit the virus to you it's the surfaces that you've touched then you touch your face or parts of your like your eye your mouth your nose or your mouth that's why how you get the virus to be transmitted rather to yourself and that's how you get infected with covid19 but your skin does not have um does not have the as2 receptors that does not have mucus, so mucus membranes that can bring about, which have the receptors that can bring about COVID-19. I think you understand the whole, <laughs> the whole issue how it's being expounded on. <laughs> so, what else do you need to know about COVID-19 based on Korea? You need to know that uh, they have actually dealt with a couple of pandemics, and that is one of the things that has led people to being quick themselves to hospital when they think they have symptoms that could show that they are they are infected with COVID-19 so in Kenya we are yet to get the mm, okay uh, two days ago when I was watching news I haven't watched news for two days but I remember the last time I watched news they, they, they got 22 patients who are infected and it's because that day they were managed to run a test on all the patients 22 patients they got three two infected but in Korea, they're actually able to run tests on one day, on a, on a single day, they can run, as in they have 15,000 tests a day. The next measure that, co that Korea has adopted is that they have a self-quarantine app. It might be called intrusive in countries like Europe, America and Africa because of the issue of privacy. But this 
but this uh, self quarantine app is mainly for people who've traveled from abroad from europe either they're foreigners or they're koreans when they come into the country they are put they are they're checked for the flu once they're tested and if you test positive you take them to hospital if you don't test positive you go home and you're supposed to be in self-quarantine they put the self-quarantine app on your phone so that they can track your location and then if you do step out of your house there is um there's an alarm that you set and the alarm goes off and also you as an individual you have the responsibility to report your symptoms twice a day in the morning and in the evening symptoms like fever maybe a cough and if you do not put the input the symptoms the staff that is monitoring you is alerted to check on you so they can know what's going on so for us we could think that the self-quarantine app is being intrusive on the issue of privacy like oh no i'm not going to go where and where but he says that is one of the things that's really helping korea so those are extraordinary measures especially the self-quarantine app <laughs> that Korea has been taking and I think that we even we as Kenyans can borrow a thing or two from them. So this is a listen the great till next time.